this is Seth Chaper from Team Just Cause Robotics, and this is the all-new Just Cause Robotics Workshop. Finally just finished moving, and while there's still a crap load of work to do to get everything fully set up the way I'd like it, I thought that I'd take this opportunity to show you guys around and give you guys a tour of what will eventually become a brand new workspace for Just Cause Robotics and a place that I run my business, build my robots, and everything in between. I'll also give you a sneak peek of the office later, where I'll be filming and editing all my videos in the future for the most part. And uh, there are some other parts of this house that I won't show you yet because they are filled with boxes that have yet to be unpacked since we're not fully moved in. But my girlfriend and I have gotten most of our stuff over here. We've still got to bring over a lot of furniture and unpack and organize things, but this is what we've got for right now. Now to start out with, one of the most important things to me in this space is just well, space. I actually have room here and I've got room to set up a bunch of shelving and actually have storage space for all my products and space to work on things. So previously I was operating out of a square, 700 square foot one bedroom apartment where, you know, more than half of the floor space was things like the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen area. Uh, those were areas I couldn't use for robots for the most part, though I ended up taking over some of the kitchen area since I just didn't have enough space to work in. Here, I'll actually have some room to get stuff done. So I've set up these two shelves, which were brand new. This one used to be in my living room. Uh, I've got the Creality Falcon 22 watt laser over here, set up just for now on this shelf. Eventually I might set up a actual table for it to be able to use it. Um, just random stuff here is all super disorganized. A lot of my overstock of products or stuff that doesn't fit immediately into my pick and packing area that I'll show earlier or later. Um, got my transmitters, I've got batteries, I've got you know, random hardware, I've got the robots themselves, parts for them, and all of that stuff over here. This workbench is eventually going to be my soldering and electrical test workbench. You can see I've got an oscilloscope, bench power supply, those are not new. I had those before. Had this before, had this whole setup before, uh, but just kind of relocated everything here. I used to have basically one workbench, and I did all my electrical and building stuff just on that, uh, and it was very cramped. So I bought all these benches, brand new, so that I'd have some proper workbench space to do all my robot building. So this bench and this bench and this bench, brand new just for building bots, way sturdier than the piece of crap that I was working on before. I might end up mounting a vise to one of these so I can, you know, properly wrench on stuff, hammer stuff, and all that. Potentially gonna be getting some bigger tools too, like I'm looking to get maybe a small lathe and milling machine and that sort of thing so I can do a bit more in-house prototyping than I could before. Not have to go to the makerspace so much. Now, there are two major challenges with setting up my shop in this basement. First of all, this is not a house I bought. I'm not made of money. This is being rented. Um, if I turn off this light here, uh, one of the issues is the lighting in here is not fantastic. So I had to add my own LED strip lights in a couple places, and I'll probably be adding more later. Um, this pegboard I had previously, but I'm not allowed to drill into the concrete walls because they're kind of the foundation of this house. Um, and because I'm renting, I'm just not allowed to do whatever I want here. So instead I had to bolt these 2x4s to the ceiling joists and then run them over to the wall and then hang 1x3s from those to bolt the pegboard to. Uh, so I've got that. I've also got a little security camera here just so, for some added peace of mind. Uh, but yeah, this pegboard's nothing new. All the tools that are here are nothing new, but uh, they are nice and organized and easy to find what I need. So that is really nice. All right, so panning on over to the left here, this is where I will be doing a lot of my SSP kit assembly. I have this laptop set up with my package label printer to print out labels. Here I've basically got all my Dartbox motors set up so I can pick and pack them really easy. I had this pegboard previously set up in a closet of my old apartment, and I had this uh, wall thing set up in that closet as well. Uh, and this table was there as well. I custom built this workbench back in my old apartment and this one I bought on Amazon. Right now you can see I changed out the crappy non-standard pegboard that this used to have on it for a custom, or for, for an actual normal one. Um, so eventually I'll probably have even more bins here and be able to stock even more products there. I also just bought this uh, big rolling bin rack from Harbor Freight, which is going to be fantastic. So 
all my normal products that I'm, you know, normal pick and packing are on this side. And then I've got parts for the SSP kits over on this side. So all the kit packing stuff can kind of happen over here really efficiently. And I might expand this in the future to add even more stuff, but hey, you never know. So if we pan on over from the order packing area, we have this crappy little workbench that I set up here temporarily. This is one half of the L-shaped workbench I custom built in my last apartment. The other half is over there uh, because when I tried moving it, it snapped in half and huge chunks of the uh, table ripped apart. So I can't easily put it back together again. Uh, so currently I have half of this table. This table is on extremely wobbly legs, and this is what I was using for my workbench back in my apartment 100% of the time. So you can imagine that was kind of a struggle. This arbor press and belt sander I had before, and this vise as well, which I had bolted to the table, and I've just left it bolted here because it's been super helpful for cutting all those 2x4s and 1x2s that I needed to hang the pegboards and stuff, like you saw earlier. And I'm sure I'll be making more use of it, so I'm just leaving this set up over in this corner for now. Easy to clean up all the sawdust, and I've got a shop vac that's brand new. And I also got an air compressor, which I haven't set up yet, which I'll be able to use to like, hopefully blow away, you know, sawdust chips and stuff like that while I'm working on the over the actual workbenches area. Then I've got a pile of filament here. I'm planning on maybe doing something similar to what Robert Cowan did with his custom filament storage, except building a set of drawers like vertically instead of like a bunch of rows horizontally to fit underneath the stairs here, because it's a bunch of wasted space otherwise. So I'm hoping I can kind of turn all of this into just packed away back there. And then I've got the two 3D printers over here. So right now I've got a Bamboo Lab P1S and X1 Carbon. Now X1 Carbon's been an absolute stalwart machine. Uh, let me see how long I've been using it for. It's got like a way to check the uh, number of print hours. So right now it has 1,861 print hours on it. I got it in around January of last year. Um, so this thing's been a true workhorse and it's been fantastic. I had planned to make a full review video on it. Maybe I'll do that in the next few weeks while I don't have a huge amount of stuff to make content about. Uh, but I do still have a few other videos planned. And uh, yeah, the P1S is relatively new. I used to have a Prusa Mark 3S and an Artillery Sidewinder X2. And this guy replaced the Prusa and this guy replaced the Sidewinder just because I never really used it, even though this machine has a 256 millimeter cubed build volume and the Sidewinder was 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. I found I basically never actually needed that build volume to make a single large part, except for like a couple times when I printed Bloodsport parts. And I'm kind of hoping Bamboo Lab comes out with a larger printer at some point. Um, so yeah, this machine's been great. I really like the touchscreen interface. If I want to just print something that I'd sent over to it, all I have to do is select it, choose what settings I want, and hit print now, and it'll do it. Um, this machine, the screen kind of sucks. I added this X-Touch mod to it, which I don't have connected right now because uh, it's really only super useful for loading and unloading the filament. Otherwise, you can kind of just use your phone and the Bamboo Handy app to do everything. But as far as print quality, it's pretty much identical to this machine. In fact, I found it prints TPU even better with better overhangs and cooling for whatever reason. And both of them are set up with hardened steel 0.6 millimeter nozzles, so anything that I slice and print for this machine, I can slice and print for this machine, except for some hard or some abrasive filaments, because this doesn't have the hardened steel extruder gears yet. I did buy them and just haven't bothered to install them yet, because the rarity with which I print that stuff, I usually can just live with having only one machine do it. Oh yeah, and then obviously I've got laundry machines here, because this is a basement. Uh, one nice thing about this, though, is... Uh, I mentioned there are two major problems. One of the issues is the lighting. The second issue is actually power. Uh, supplying power for everything that I want to run in here is a bit of a challenge because this is meant to be a basement and not a workshop. So there is one outlet right here, which is actually on its own 20 amp breaker. And that's what's powering the 3D printers, filament dryers and everything here. So that circuit can provide in theory, 2,400 watts of power and the 3D printers and all three of my filament dryers together, if they were all drawing their rated peak wattage at the same time, would be about half of that. But realistically, I also have Wi-Fi outlets connected to both printers that monitor them, and I can tell how much power they're using at any given time. While they're printing, they really only use like 80 or 100 watts most of the time. So 
with all three filament dryers running and both printers running, I'm nowhere close to even half of the rated power for that one circuit. Uh, the washing machine and dryer though, they have this convenient 240 volt outlet, single phase, and another uh, 120 volt over here that's on a separate circuit. So if I need extra power, I can tap into that. In addition to that, there is one more outlet. This is the only other power outlet in the entire basement. And it is right here. <laughs> and it is hooked up to a sump pump originally. So that power is currently going to this table, to this power bar, to this power bar. And it's also running through an extension cable up to this thing. Uh, and that's all being supplied by one circuit right now, which is not ideal, but none of these things are going to be using a ton of power at once, except for maybe the air compressor when I have it hooked up. Um, another thing that I found that I can do is, on Amazon I actually bought these things. These are like little light bulb extensions that allow you to plug AC power into the light bulbs. So if I end up setting up tables in the middle of this space and I want to get lighting, additional lighting or whatever, I can just tap straight into the power for the bulbs, and that is on a uh, fourth separate circuit. So there's like three different, uh, I think it's two 15 amp breakers and one 20 amp breaker for 120 volt, and then that uh, dryer outlet for 240 volt in here, and that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, I should mention there is one other issue with this basement, and that is that, at least right now in the winter, it's very cold. As you can see, it's like 60 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Um, which is uh, pretty cold, yeah. Uh, I can't do much about that because, like I explained, there isn't a lot of power available. So I do have one space heater down here, hooked up to the same circuit as the 3D printers, and that space heater is rated for 1500 watts, so together with the 3D printers and dryers and everything, still won't exceed the wattage limit for that circuit. But even leaving that thing on for several hours, it can only raise the temperature in here by like, maybe, five degrees Fahrenheit, because uh, this is a huge space and it's got really thick concrete walls that stay cold for a very long time. So I think that issue is really only temporary during the winter. I mean, even when it was below freezing outside, it stayed, you know, in the mid fifties in here. So having the space heater just to raise it back up to like 60 or so, I mean, I'm wearing no sweatshirt right now. And like, as long as I keep moving around, it's not too bad. Um, in the summer, I don't know how bad it's going to get in terms of the heat, but I think because it's down underground, it'll stay relatively cool. So hopefully we won't have to worry about much in that department. So yeah, this is the new Just Cause Robotics workshop. Uh, let me show you guys upstairs and take a look at the office real quick. It's definitely not fully set up, but at least you can kind of see what I've got for right now. So this is my new office setup. Right now I've got the sit-stand desk, which is technically a flexi-spot desk, although they did not sponsor me whatsoever. I paid for it with my own money, and uh, I reached out to them and they never responded to my emails, so yay! Uh, so this sit-stand desk is going to be pretty nice because I can sit in my chair and work when I want to, but if I want to exercise, I also got this little stepper thing off Amazon for like 50 bucks. Uh, so I can actually use this at my desk, and when this is in the highest position, it's like pretty much the perfect height for me to still use the keyboard and everything. And, you know, got my speakers and everything else mounted to the desk. Got some cable management tray under here and a bunch of stuff bolted to the bottom of the desk. So there's basically only, you know, two cords, one for this huge power strip and one for this lamp that are coming down. And then all I can do my work here. I am missing a microphone at the moment. I don't know what happened to it. it Might've gotten lost in the move. I've got another one on order that should be here tomorrow. And then, as you can see, I've got some decorations that are very not set up right now. And eventually, I'll probably try and make like a cool backdrop. So normally when I'm filming my videos, I have my camera mounted in this little quick uh, change holder up here and filming out away from me. That's why in my last apartment, there was a bed behind me all the time, uh, which is not ideal. So I'm hoping to make like kind of a, an actual purpose-built backdrop that'll look nice for the future but it's probably gonna be a few weeks away from being completed. So for now, this is kind of what I've got. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a fantastic place to go if you wanna get CNC machine 3D printed parts or you just wanna make some awesome PCBs. You can check out their online quoting engine right here. Simply you know, upload your part and you can immediately get a quote in 
all kinds of materials, aluminum, steel, copper, brass, titanium, everything in between. I've used their CNC machining for a lot of aluminum parts and even for some 4140 steel parts for division recently. And they always make great parts at a great price. So check out PCBWay at the link in the video description and you can get $5 off of your first order. Before I go, I'd like to propose a sincere thank you to all of my channel viewers, subscribers, Patreon supporters, and everybody else who has helped Just Cause Robotics get to where it is today. Uh, I've, you probably have seen any of my past videos, and especially my I Quit video. You'll know that in April of 2023, I quit my mechanical engineering full-time job to pursue Just Cause Robotics full-time instead. And it's been going pretty well. Uh, I'm actually saving a bit of money moving into this house with my girlfriend compared to where I was before So while I am expanding into more space it actually saves a bit of money in the long run But still I wouldn't have needed to expand if it weren't for all the incredible support that I've gotten From all the people buying just because robotics parts over the past few years So I want to extend a sincere thanks to everybody who's helped to support me and however you feel fit uh, If you really do want to support me, but you don't have a robot to build as always, you can check out the Patreon in the link below. But if you do want to build your own bot or you want to get into building Comet robots yourself, check out Just Cause Robotics website. I'll have links in the description as well. We've got some awesome product releases. The 5536 hub motor just came out. 4935 uh, battle hardened motor was released a few months ago. And I've got some other awesome releases planned. So make sure to check the website a few times and stay tuned for that. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, click like. If you want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified. Might even have a cheeky release tomorrow, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks.